and welcome to the Columbus Metropolitan Club. I'm Steve Marks, Chair of the CMC Board of Trustees and President of Hannah News Service here in Columbus. It's great to have you join us today. Metro Club live streaming is presented by the Emergency Response Fund of the Columbus Foundation and in partnership with the Columbus Dispatch and PNC. Today's forum is sponsored by the U.S. Bank, the Robert Weiler Company, Deloitte and Steptoe and Johnson, and today's forum is the Joseph and Carol Newcomb Aluto Legacy Forum focusing on higher education. We'd like to thank those of you watching today who purchased a virtual seat for this forum. We are grateful for your support. We're able to continue live streaming services in large part because of you. Thank you. You can learn more about CMC, register events, join or renew your membership, or make a donation anytime at columbusmetroclub.org. Universities provide strong foundations for the lucky communities where they exist. In Columbus, Ohio, in, in Columbus, Ohio State is a medical center, a leader of research and innovation, a major employer, a business incubator, a cultivator of arts, a center for athletics, all while serving as an education hub and home to thousands of residents. And unique to higher education, a university president presides over it all. As the first in my family to attend and graduate from college, I am thankful for the opportunity that the Ohio State University afforded me as a proud parent of three college graduates and a fourth who is little over a year from his graduation, I understand and have lived the slogan, but for Ohio State. I'm truly honored and humbled to be able to introduce the current president of my alma mater on behalf of the Columbus Metropolitan Club. Let's welcome the president of the Ohio State University, Dr. Christina M. Johnson. And our host today, President and CEO of the Columbus Partnership and an Ohio State University trustee, Alex Fisher. Alex, the stage is yours. Thank you, Steve and um, Jane and Andy and all the team here at CMC. It's uh, just fantastic what you all have done to keep this forum uh, alive and active and such an important resource during this past year. So uh, congratulations. And Dr. Johnson, it's, I'm kind of remembering the old commercial, is it live or Memorex? And uh, it's great to be with you and uh, in person and not over the many Zoom calls we've had over the last number of months. Uh, we welcome you to, to the CMC, uh, this great uh, forum of conversation uh, here in our community. Well, thanks very much, uh, Alex. It is a pleasure to be here, and I'd just like to, say, to thank Stephen Marks, as well as the entire um, you know, Columbus Metro Club, uh, all the members here, and uh, particularly Joe and Carol, since this is a namesake lecture series, and of course our sponsors, uh, U.S. Bank and Deloitte, uh, Robert Weiler and Steptoe and Johnson, so couldn't be happier to be here. You're great. So it, um, it, it seems like a lifetime ago. Um, I think you and I, over a year ago, were having a phone conversation, and then the pandemic hit, and those turned into a series of Zoom conversations. And then six months ago, uh, you became uh, our president at The Ohio State uh, University. Um, you know, how are you and Veronica doing? Um, it's uh, great to have both of you uh, uh, in our community and in these new posts. How's it going? Well, it's going incredibly well. I mean, Veronica and I both feel so warm and welcomed here into this community. It's a fabulous community. Couldn't be happier. And I think the one thing we're looking forward to is getting out and being in the community because, as you know, uh, we arrived the end of July and things were starting to, to, to uh, spike again. So our, uh, our wings have been clipped a little bit, but we hope to be out more and more in the community. We have gotten out to the zoo quite a lot. That's <laughs> been a, a favorite, and we've been out, of course, you know, at some of the restaurants. And uh, before, though, we turned purple, we really have been kind of quarantining. <laughs> well, I hope Tom Stoff and uh, Jack Hanna are treating you all to some uh, behind-the-scenes uh, <laughs> opportunities at the zoo. You know, it, it's hard to have first impressions in this year, uh, such an unusual year. What are some of your all's first impressions of, uh, of Columbus and the Ohio State University in Ohio? Well, um, you know, I really haven't spent much time in Ohio uh, over my academic career. Been here a few times, given a few talks, visited my dear friend uh, Gordon Gee when he was president uh, both times. So that's been fun. In fact, the last time he was here, we're in his former office, now my <laughs> office, and he, he was in one chair, I was in the other, so we switched. <laughs> so it was kind of That's fun. That's fun. Um, 
loved getting to know the, the students, the faculty and the staff, the administrators. I mean, everybody is just out to be excellent and do the best they can. So that's pretty inspiring. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's been an incredible six months. It's been challenging. And some of the challenges are to arrive on a, on a campus as a first time president with uh, the pandemic that we haven't seen in 100 years. Uh, you know, it was something that was all consuming and, and still is, but we've made great strides. I just want to give you an update. Our on-campus positivity rate is less than 0.2%. Yeah, amazing. So it's it's really, I, I hats off to all the, the students, faculty and staff that are really, you know, staying socially distant and continuing to, you know, do the non-pharmaceutical interventions that, that got us here. You know, fantastic progress, and uh, appreciate. Uh, I've had a inside uh, uh, insight into your leadership, um, and even before you arrived, you were bringing thoughts from other places in the uh, country to to, to bring, and, and the results are speaking for themselves. But what a time to start uh, this! You know, great new job in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. uh, a summer that brought the stark realities of racial injustice that yeah. we're all both struggling with and committed yeah. to uh, to working on um, political strife, uh, economic uh, challenges. To, to say these are unprecedented times would sort of be the understatement of the, right. of the day. Um, in addition to COVID, tell us about some of the other ways you're uh, focusing on these big issues that are facing not only our community, but candidly our country. Yeah. Well, as you said, we're, we're facing uh, some unprecedented challenges. Um, you know, coming to grips with uh, racism and systemic racism and doing more than recognizing it, but contributing every day to creating an, an anti-racist society, which is really what we're bringing together. And we're doing it in a couple ways. One is through our task force on racism and, and racial inequities. Uh, in our ta task force on community and safety well-being. I mean, these are two things where we're getting together uh, some of the great minds at Ohio State and coming up with, I just received recommendations from our task force on racism and racial inequities. And I plan to announce a few of the things we are going to do about that next week at my uh, state, my first state of the university address. <laughs> so very excited about that. I spend every Friday um, from 1 to 2.30 with the task force, and it's it's really um, been very eye-opening and, and very, very very good. So that's, that's one thing. Um, our students want to be back in the classroom. Yeah. We want to be back in the classroom with them. And so really working daily on making that happen. And students, just like ourselves, want to be with others, and they want to be together. And so this Friday, we uh, will be looking at allowing events and gatherings uh, for less than 10 students, still keeping with the state uh, guidelines there. So I think that we'll continue to build on the momentum that we've done keeping our students safe. You know, it's a it's a unique time for you because you haven't experienced a campus in what uh, ever we would have called normal times. I'm, I'm I'm curious on this snowy day whether or not, you know, back when I back in the day uh, we would grab our trays from the cafeteria on a <laughs> on a day like this and uh, go sledding down down a hill somewhere. Um, What's it uh, What's it like with a snowy oval uh, over the last couple of days? You know, it's not that much different than it was in the fall, except there's snow, because in the fall it was pretty empty. It was empty, but not as empty as it is, is now. And what we did on the oval, which I don't know if many of you know this, but we put these buckeye pods, maybe about twice the size of our tables, and spaced them so they'd be at least six feet apart, like we are, socially distant. And then students knew that they could go with their own bubble and study there. So that was a little more active in the fall. Obviously, with the snow, that's not happening. But I, I try to walk uh, several times a week in the fall. It was more over to the student union, over the faculty club, just to meet people and run into uh, folks and, and try and get a sense for what is the Ohio State University. So you you mentioned uh, next week's uh, university address. Um, any uh, any insights uh, here? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, breaking news uh, that we might uh, look forward to. You know. Um, I've really worked hard on it, and it's it's not quite where I want it to be, but it will be. And it's, first of all, how do you take an iconic institution like The Ohio State University and boil it down to something that, you know, you can talk about for 30 minutes, right? So there's, there's breaking news. It shouldn't be longer than 30 minutes. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that's so special about The Ohio State University, of course, is its land-grant status. So trying to define and envision, envision 
what that land grant university in the 21st century shall be. And clearly, we have the opportunity to define that because of our size, scope, and scale. We have everything. We have seven health sciences colleges. We have, of course, a great liberal arts engineering business. Now I've started to mention them. If I don't mention all 15, I'll be in trouble. So I'll wait till <laughs> next week or I will. Uh, we can do it all. And so here's to me the exciting thing about The Ohio State University. It was built to allow people from ordinary backgrounds to do extraordinary things. And that was my grandfather. My grandfather grew up on a farm here. He came here to Ohio State when there were 770 students. We have almost 100 times that today. And it helped him do great things. So there'll be a little bit of work uh, in, the, in it about my granddad, of course. I've seen his um, diploma in your office yeah. uh, very prominently uh, displayed. That's what a unique uh, connection uh, for you to kind of come full circle in the family journey uh, back in Ohio. You know, and that was the, the one thing when, of course, I visited that day and you showed me around uh, when during the interview process and we went to the Oval and I looked over and there was that huge tree and you could imagine that that huge tree might have been there a hundred years ago when my grandfather was there and he and my grandmother might have sat under that big tree and I just started to envision what it would be like for us to be here and it was very easy so it was really fun so thank you so that day um, I remember uh, you and Veronica and I buckled up in a helicopter and took a tour of the city because it was an unusual time it was like how do you how do you show off this great uh, and vibrant uh, you know city uh, during the pandemic and we took a helicopter ride around the city and uh, you know you know discussed and toured um, how do you think about um, you know a city uh, as vibrant as Columbus is and you know one of the greatest uh, institutions of higher education and how they intersect in the town gown relationship so that was a, an amazing view because it's uh, the university is enormous and the city is spectacular um, and I think the other part of the land grant mission of course is to serve those we influence in the communities they live. So I think that is another feature that uh, I'm so proud of what Ohio State does in the community and even more of the work that we can do together in the community. And I think part of that will also be um, an entrepreneurship initiative that might be announced next week. Um, you know, I was speaking yesterday with uh, Chancellor Gardner. I don't want to give away his thunder because he's testifying next Thursday um, oh, to the Finance Committee. No, I won't do that. But I will say he's got a pretty interesting statistic on the impact of educational attainment on the economy. So stay tuned for for his address. It's it's stunning. Just a, a little bit more graduates from each one of our universities throughout the 14 in, in Ohio would be enormously impactful to the economy and the well-being of this of this state. You know, the, the chancellor, the governor, the uh, lieutenant governor all are, you know, very focused on the Ohio economy and the leverage of um, yeah. the higher ed institutions around the state. And we oftentimes, those of us in Columbus, think of Ohio State, um, you know, as Columbus, but, you know, really a, a reach all over the, the state. How do you, how are you thinking about the breadth uh, in, an impact uh, of all of our regional campuses. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because as you know, I came from a university system in New York that had 64 campuses. So the fact that we have five, um, really, I, I get it. You know, I understand the importance and how we link together. I've had the opportunity to visit to one in person, one virtually. I'll be visiting all all the campuses and all the colleges the rest of this this spring. And uh, they are really interesting, really extraordinary. They, they do it all. They do research. They do discovery. They do the teaching. And that some of the professors from our regional campuses do sabbaticals here at the Columbus campus, some from the Columbus campus do sabbaticals at the regional campuses. So it is it is actually a pretty integrated and well-oiled uh, little mini system, which I think uh, gives us the opportunity to reach all students and adult learners in all 88 counties. That is a, a, a huge opportunity, as you said, to leverage. The, um... The, that land grant mission, the Morrell Act, uh, President Lincoln, if if the if President Lincoln could somehow magically, you know, come come back and see Columbus uh, and the Ohio State University today, um, what do you think he would what do you think he would say to that original vision? 
I hope you would smile and say, wow, this is this. I couldn't even have envisioned what that one act would have done. Right now, what's interesting, and I'd say this might be another little inkling of next week's speech. I do think that we have the opportunity to bring to life the legends of our history through machine learning and the kind of advances we've made in technology. So um, stay tuned. I think the application of machine learning to the, to the arts, uh, the history, and um, the social sciences has been underappreciated, and we need to be a leader to bring that to the fore. You've, um, you've often talked about the interdisciplinary nature of how um, what happens in arts and sciences uh, intersects with what might happen in the engineering laboratory or over in the School of Medicine. Uh, you know, talk about that interplay of the breadth of Ohio State. Well, and, and you know we're doing that uh, so well here. Um, I, I'm thinking about a number of different examples, even when we think about just setting up, which we did last summer, um, the testing facility. And this was a phenomenal, um, really collaboration between the Wexner Medical Center and our researchers, Dr. Morley Stone, Dr. Peter Moeller, Andy uh, Thomas, Hal Paz, et cetera. Now that I've started to mention, I, <laughs> I get in the same trouble again, but, uh, and Christy Bortolo. So you had uh, folks that understood what the testing needed to look like, and you had folks that understood how to do it at scale. Right. And seeing them work together, within two weeks, we went from testing 300 people a day to 3,000 which is probably the reason we were able to stay open. If you go to the shot, and hopefully many of you will go to the shot when your turn comes, and I'm looking forward to mine to get go, vaccinated. Go to the shot to get your shot? Yeah, go to the shot and get, get your shot, exactly. Um, that was a collaboration between our athletics department and again, our logistics and the Wexner Medical Center. And I've gone through and, and I've toured it and watched it. That works like a well-oiled machine too. It's pretty phenomenal. So that's really where we get that leverage when we take the best across the multiple disciplines and do the best. And there are certain things that I, I've, I've said this before. I really think the future of drug discovery and drug delivery, of, of which we definitely need that now, um, rests on our ability to develop advanced instrumentation, especially in computing. Probably you'll have uh, one of the first applications for quantum computing. So I wouldn't expect a quantum computer to be built in the Wexner Medical Center, no more than I expect the Wexner Medical Center would expect the physics department to, to you know, um, invent and uh, develop a vaccine. But working together, they absolutely will. And the speed at which it's been done this last year was because of cross-disciplinary teams working all over the country. So I think it's something Ohio State gets, and that's something that uh, my role as, as president and uh, Bruce McFerrin and provost and our deans all working together, we will see many more of those breakthroughs. So you mentioned entrepreneurship, and uh, you're no stranger. Um, you came out of government and founded a company and grew it uh, in the renewable energy space. Talk about your own experiences uh, in the business world and how you're bringing those uh, back into the uh, academic setting now. Well, uh, yeah, I'd be delighted to. So first of all, I have to define what I mean, what an entrepreneur means to me. This is gonna get me in trouble with everybody, but because now they'll wanna be entrepreneurs and then, then uh, that'll be good. But I think an entrepreneur is knowing the right thing to do without being told. <laughs> so I've just given everybody permission to do the right thing. Uh, and, and it is taking initiative. And you could be an entrepreneur within a company, within your own unit. It, it's, it should be endemic to everything that we do. So, um, and I don't know why. It's just always something that I have enjoyed doing um, is uh, trying to take some advances that I might have seen in one area to market and commercialization. When I was at the University of Colorado in Boulder, I had a fabulous research group. And we, um, we had about 119 patents. Uh, I never had a sole patent. It was always with my, my students and, and other faculty. Um, and we commercialized almost every single one of them into some product processes. If you've seen a 3D movie, some of the advances of Dr. Gary Sharp, who worked with me uh, and myself are in there. So if you bought a rear projection TV in the, in the 2000s, um, it probably had our components inside. Uh, the challenge of being an entrepreneur is you gotta keep being an entrepreneur and being innovative because you'll get disremediated and that's something we need to teach. 
And I think we can do that. I love, I love your important point that entrepreneurship in, is not limited to business. I mean, it happens uh, in the classroom, it happens in the laboratories, it happens in all of our lives all around us right. constantly. Um, speaking of your time in Boulder, Colorado, I think the university president there was uh, Gordon Gee, another interesting, uh, you know, uh, uh, circle of life. Yes, it was indeed. I was an assistant professor starting in 1985 when Gordon was president. And we got to know each other at that time for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is that we had uh, worked to found a, a major National Science Foundation research center, which was the largest grant the university had ever received. So that's how I first met Gordon. But Elizabeth um, Gee, who had, of course, passed away when he was president here at Ohio State, became a very dear friend. And she put together a, a women's faculty group, and we used to get together about once a month and have lunch cross-disciplinary. So some of my very dear friends from English, law, communications, even athletics, we, she made those connections. She was a great connector, and that was a, another uh, connection here. Speaking of athletics, um, <laughs> uh, you and Veronica are no stranger to, to college uh, athletics. Both of you all in your own right were really collegiate standouts in your own uh, uh, sports. Um, here, six months into your tenure, you've got a, you're a national championship runner-up, which isn't bad in six months, uh, nice. football team. Um, the men's and women's basketball team are top ten. Talk about the your own experience of college ath athletics and how it shaped your life, how it shaped Veronica's life, and the importance of uh, athletics beyond the field. Well, first of all, I'd like to give a tremendous shout out to our football team. Uh, and all the fall athletes uh, who really persevered in order to do what they've trained all their lives to do, and that's compete. What a crazy season. It was crazy, and, you know, uh, our team did phenomenally well. And so I could talk all, all day about, about these fine young men and women that continue to compete, continue to fight for what they believed in and continue both on and off the field. Yeah, and we'd, we couldn't have a... a better head coach in uh, Coach Day, nor athletic director in, in Gene Smith. I've met most of the coaches to a coach. They're spectacular. And I've had the chance even to go out on now this sort of a fun story. Um, my sport in college was field hockey and lacrosse. So I've been able to visit the field hockey team, and I plan to go out to the lacrosse team. I think they're all starting up on Saturday. So I went out and I actually, you know, had gear from the field hockey team. So I put the gear on. I go out there in the fall, and um, I used to take the penalty strokes. So at the end of the game, if it's tied, you break the tie by penalty strokes. Or if during, just like in soccer, if there's a, an, uh, a penalty within a certain sphere of the goal, you get a penalty stroke. Can often win the game, or not. So, um, so truth be told, over the weekend. I decided I would practice a little bit just in case, you know, the goalkeeper would challenge me, right? So I got out of practice a little bit. I thought, okay, I don't have a, I don't really have a ball. I, I kind of have the stick that the team gave me, so I was using a wiffle ball. And, you know, I felt, okay, maybe this will be all right. So I got on the field, and darn if I don't get challenged. <laughs> So I said, oh, okay, well, we'll have to do this. And so it was fabulous. We took, uh, did best out of three. Uh, I placed the ball where I wanted it. It just doesn't quite have the pace I had 40 years ago. <laughs> so um, Abby stopped um, all of them, which was great. And uh, I thought that was pretty fun. So I had a good time. It was really great. And so what did I learn? You know, when I was an athlete, it was, um, I was inspired by, we had a lot of Olympians uh, at my alma mater. I was not one, um, but I was inspired by them. And when I went out onto that field, you know, every day I thought, today I got to push them and me because this could be the difference between us being on the podium or not. And for Veronica, now Veronica's the real deal. She was uh, Olympic caliber, she right? Was, she was. She uh, qualified for the Olympics for her home country, Venezuela, in 1992. And uh, did not go because uh, Venezuela decided to send basketball team instead of the swimming team. So she, so, and she only found out two weeks before yeah, the Olympics. Right? That was heartbreaking. So she and I both know what it's like to be denied the opportunity after she trained all her life. I mean, here's 16 years she's been in a pool. This is her shot. And she's told two weeks before that she doesn't get to go. Yeah. And I didn't realize how good she was until we were watching the 2016 Olympics. And she just quietly said, I would have made the finals. 
And then I thought, oh my gosh, because she's, you know, so humble. And I, I was just like, I fell off my chair. I was like, wow, you know, so that was, that was pretty, pretty interesting. So I think that's why I, I took the return to, to sports for all our, our teams pretty personally, because I've been there and she's been there and we know what it's like to be denied. I don't want our kids to be denied. So I'll give a little bit of a heads up. We're going to turn in a few minutes, uh, uh, Jane, to questions from the audience. And I know that uh, a lot of those are, are, are coming in. You're having a lot of fun, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can just tell uh, with both you and Veronica. Yeah. Uh, it's a fun time in life. And um, um, it just shows as you think about hitting the, the wiffle ball with the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll hear that about it from the team, but it was, I, you know, I had to, right? No, we are. We're having a blast. And, you know, it's a tough time. It is a challenging time. And we just can't wait till we help all of us move through this to the other side. So before we turn to questions, maybe a, a, a leadership question yeah. um, in leading in these turbulent times and some of the lessons that you have brought with you and the things that you're learning about uh, how we all persevere uh, to excellence during these yeah. tough times. You know, I think um, it, it, all of us have seen tough times. I know you know that. I know everybody here in the audience uh, knows that, that we've all gone through our tough times. And I think every day you just you got to get up and say, okay, what can I do today? Just like that little kid that was going out onto the hockey field, what can I do today to be my best? Right. And that's what I think, you know, this is about what we can teach and what we can show by example is what can we do to continue to persevere and, and move forward. I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yeah, no, always insightful just to hear how other leaders are, you know, digging deep uh, within themselves to keep themselves motivated and motivating um, all the people that are around them. Yeah, I mean, that's right. And I think what you mentioned is it's, uh, you know, all, it's also showing up every day, and there's been only about two times, maybe three times since August. I haven't been in the office. And most others aren't um, uh, because of the pandemic, but um, a, a sense in your own mind of um, um, how the return to uh, campus for those in the workforce that otherwise uh, aren't there now? Right, and so, you know, we have right now, if you can work from home, uh, we want people to work, work from home, particularly when we spiked in November and spiked in August. I think now that we've got uh, on campus below 0.2%, off campus below a half a percent, and starting to look at vaccination, and as we continue to, you know, carry out the non-pharmaceutical interventions, we're looking right now about how we return to a reactivated campus in the fall. You're, you're really a, um, a, a big little city, 100,000 yeah. students, faculty, staff, uh, sort of the, you're not only a university president, but uh, mayor of the Ohio State <laughs> University campus. <laughs> uh, I'd like to be. <laughs> uh, Jane, uh, maybe we could uh, see what's on the mind of our audience. We do. Um, quite a few of these questions came in as people registered for the forum. So I have paper and I also have some that people are chatting uh, with Laney as the forum's going on. So we have a lot of questions. Roger Blackwell from the Blackwell Business Advisors, who you may know is the Blackwell Inn. Um, are there plans to interest and teach students in entrepreneurship in majors beyond the business school? Absolutely. Uh, and we were talking a little bit earlier. Um, I really think um, everybody in every field can be an entrepreneur because it's all about taking initiative and it's about seizing an opportunity, a need, and going after it. So we're really exploring right now how we do a broad cross-university entrepreneurship program certificate as well as opportunities to go out and uh, without announcing what we might announce next week, a program that would empower and enable students to, to pursue an entrepreneurship focus in their particular field. You know, I'm reminded of a stat, um, the average age of the Fortune 100 CEO when they founded the company uh, is 25 years old. Really? And, wow. you know, it's kind of a proven phenomenon of entrepreneurship okay. happening. But it's not unique just to a business school, right? It's happening out of the English department and yep. it's happening in all aspects of uh, disciplines. Yep, and we saw that this year with uh, the Root IPO. Yeah, right. right. 
Barbara Fergus has a question that is a little bit parallel to this, has some similarities. Many universities have an honors college which benefits both students and university advancement. Do you have any plans to add this college to OSU? Well, Barbara, hello. It's, it's good to hear from you. We met, oh, I think uh, one of my four or five visits, um, so I look forward to seeing you again when we can. Uh, absolutely. That's something that we're actively, we will actively study and work with the, the deans and the faculty. Uh, I think it'd be a marvelous way of, again, bringing that individualized attention and mentorship to, to our students. So uh, make a note, we'll get after it. Excellent. Susan Hartman asks, is it possible to reduce the large numbers of highly paid administrators who have been added to universities in the past three decades or so? So I have to, you know, look at that and just see, you know, where Ohio State is in that regard. Um, there's always opportunities for efficiencies. And I will say that um, my predecessor, Dr. Drake, uh, who I've continued to, to speak with, set a goal in his investiture address of taking 200 million out of the system. And he succeeded in doing that. So we're actually exploring ways we can be efficient, which will include a whole number of things. Um, hopefully that doesn't mean I should resign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maria uh, Kamar, Kamar, excuse me, Maria, if I've mispronounced that. Columbus is the city of possibilities. OSU is a network of possibilities that far extend our city and span the globe. Can you share one new connection or relationship that you and your wife are building at OSU that is most surprising or unexpected to you and why? Oh, you know, if I had to, if I mentioned one, I'd be leaving out a thousand. Um, I think the enormous number of connections, again, with the breadth of the university. So we've met people in the vet school, met uh, individuals in the dentistry school, seen connections between, you know, animal models for cancer and the cancer center. So there are a lot of connections. Um, I, you know, the Pelotonia. So I could go on and on. So there's, uh, I wouldn't say there's just one that comes to top of mind, there's probably too many. <laughs> that's, a, that's the topic for your book, right? Uh, Bill Lafayette, who owns Regionomics and is a well-known economist here in Columbus, the Ohio economy outside of the immediate Columbus area has been underperforming for years. Are there opportunities there for Ohio State to address this problem? And, and I guess I'll add my own little piece to this. Um, glad to know your dad or your grandfather was a farmer here in Ohio. I came from the ag background, so extension is near and dear to me. Yeah. And I've seen how our Franco County Extension has addressed issues in the urban landscape um, through their work. Is, is Extension uh, an opportunity for us to do more to build our communities throughout the state? Yeah, absolutely. And I uh, have had the opportunity to, to visit the, the College of uh, Agriculture, uh, Food Agriculture, Environmental Sciences, and we've got a fabulous dean there, so I'm learning more about the Extension. And of course, our provost also comes from the same college. So how we utilize that, and again, I think going back to the Morrill Act, how do we um, utilize them to bring uh, technology and innovation to the local communities, I think is clearly what we need to be doing. And we, um, one statistic that I read was there's something like 25 to 30 million adult learners in the U.S. with some sort of higher education but never completed a degree or a certificate. And again, going back to what Chancellor Gardner will say in a week, uh, that increase in attainment will have a huge impact. And if it can have that impact in a distributed way, that's a huge win. Mm -hmm. So if, if I if I ask you to look at Columbus in Ohio, and you've got life's experiences uh, in many different arenas and many different locations, and oftentimes we're asking you know you what the university's you know gonna do. What do you think the community <laughs> needs to be doing, uh, and what advice might you bring to civic and business leaders that are watching? Uh, in terms of, uh, if not a critical eye, a discerning eye that says, what uh, what can Columbus and Ohio be doing to to better leverage my sort of favorite word, uh, the the university? Well, thank you for that question because it's interesting. The uh, company that I started after I left the Department of Energy as undersecretary was a hydropower company, and we actually had clients in Ohio. And there was a particular plant that I always wanted to buy and upgrade and, and uh, modernize a bit. So the company called me, the new CEO said, well, we finally closed on that uh, plant, which is not too far away. And I said, that's great. 
Will you take interns from Ohio State? Will you take interns from our mechanical engineering, electrical engineering department, our sustainability? I got back one word, absolutely. So I didn't have a, it wasn't a big company. It was distributed throughout, you know, 10 states. But we had a ratio of about 10% interns every summer to the total number of employees that we had. We had double-digit interns, and we had them all at corporate, and they all did great projects, and that informed their future, their career, gave us a chance to see some of the new talent coming out and do some innovative things, and it gave the opportunity for the students to transition between work in the classrooms and work at work. So I think that's the one thing that we could really use help with is having uh, our corporate partners uh, really think about internships and co-ops at scale because I'd love to give any student that has uh, a particular interest the opportunity to get out into the real world and learn what it's like to be part of a workforce. You know, it's a real differentiator if you think about the Big Ten and you think about the state up north yeah. and uh, they've got a great engineering program uh, but there aren't a lot of job opportunities in Ann Arbor, and you think about the vibrancy of our business community combined with the vibrancy of the university. We, we've got to be resolved on both sides, uh, and I think it's an appropriate call out to look for those places where uh, we can engage and give the students a unique opportunity because when we do, they're more likely to want to stay here. When they stay here, exactly. they're more likely to want to uh, grow a family and grow this economy in the way that we want to. You know, and, and that's a really good point. If I could just follow on with that for a minute, Alex, because when we were on the uh, partnership call, uh, there were some, uh, some of the leaders were talking about that they are adding, you know, 20, 50 employees a week. And having, being able to be that engine that helps the company scale up is what we want to be. So that means engaging early so that we can get the students into those experiences, but also develop the curriculum, the certificates, the other sort of, of uh, opportunities to educate students coming out, but also educate the workforce that we have programs with, for example, J.P. Morgan Chase, where we're doing data analytics and we're teaching a data analytics certificate for a, you know, a, a group or a cohort, that's another way that we can add value. And that's what we want to do. We want to add value to the community. It's such a fabulous community. This is a question from Columbus State Community College Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Desiree Polk Bland. Columbus State is proud to partner with Ohio State University to contribute to equitable admission pathways for students who start with us as an open access institution and continue on to guaranteed entry into Ohio State. We are so excited to welcome and work with you. Can you describe your vision for fostering and furthering Ohio State's commitment to equity within your student body? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you, Desiree. And um, I had a chance to speak with um, President Harrison, Harrison last week, and um, that was great. I mean, absolutely doing, uh, continuing to build on our two plus two program, uh, the Weiler Scholars, um, all those kinds of things that make those pathways accessible and um, active are, are really at the heart. I've just hired a new executive vice president for research innovation and the knowledge enterprise. And one of the first things I said to Dr. Wong, Grace Wong, was they said, we need to strengthen that two plus two program with uh, Columbus State. So, and, and she understands very well how to do that because she was an interim president of a college that really worked very closely with um, community colleges and other four-year colleges. So, um, you know, we need to, to make sure that, that the moral act works for everybody. And, you know, if you, I, I once um, heard a, uh, a lecture by uh, President Clinton, it was after he was out of the office, and he talked about how over time, from the founding of our country to present, how we the people, you know, from the Declaration of Independence, we the people, how we the people has been defined and improved and broadened and broadened and broadened, and I think the same thing for the Moral Act. And access and affordability then just becomes a you know critical piece i think the two plus two partnership is one uh, part of that equation it's huge i know you're very committed to you know continuing i think it's an area where dr drake uh you know really uh inspired us to go further and you're following uh, in Absolutely. those footsteps yeah in fact dr drake also pledged five years ago to add 20 million in financial aid every year 
uh, for five years till where it's up to 100 million. Now we need to take the, the next step, so stay tuned. Great. So I can't resist, but add, um, there was an article in the paper today uh, that Jill Biden, Jill Biden was talking about free community college. How does that work with the relationship that you have with that help or what kind of impact would that have on Ohio State? Yeah, so I think it would definitely help because I think, Alex, where you're going is that, um, so the cost of attendance and somewhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars a year. If I there, if the tuition is one part of it at about twelve thousand, but the rest of it is room and board, and so the ability to do a couple things. One is engage with our community colleges to reduce the cost of overall attendance and reduce debt. So I'm, I'm working on these numbers, but what I'm told is we have about 4,000 students a year that graduate with on average about $27,000 in debt. So if you do the, the math, it's around uh, 100 million a year um, in debt, right? So the governor in the budget, and you know, hats off to the governor, lieutenant governor, and our chancellor, they are such strong proponents of higher ed. So they're proposing to increase the Ohio um, College Opportunity Grant, or OCOG. That will help. That will help a lot. And then, um, depending on you know how the budget you know knits out, I'd like to continue to put um, money towards th what Dr. Drake started. And I, I think there's a, a path to significantly reducing that debt. Yeah. Uh, Doug Buchanan, uh, who is editor of Columbus Business First, who if you haven't met yet, has OSU's real estate needs changed because of the impact of COVID? Yeah, so if you, um, and, and Doug, thanks for that question. Um, I would say most companies, not universities per se, but most companies would look at um, maybe 25 to 30 percent of their workforce may not be in the office going forward. Now that's looking at it now, and it's, they'll always have a hard to say if that what next five or ten years are going to look like. So you might think, well, if that's the case, then would, what would you expect around universities? So there's a couple things I would say. Um, some of our biggest building is going to go in the West Campus Innovation District. And that's going to be focused on doubling our research enterprise. So right now we do roughly a billion dollars between industry, federal funded research, and internally funded research. Uh, we, uh, I've set a goal, talked to Dr. Paz, he's on board, our chancellor, uh, Grace Wong, she's on board. Let's double that within the decade. If we do that, you need a lab and a place in part to work. Now, there's a lot of work that can be done remotely and on, on computers and computer simulation. But at the end of the day, the quantum computer is going to need a lab, going to need uh, drug discovery, is going to need um, facilities too. So I think it's a little bit different. I think that there, there will be um, continuous construction and building for those modern facilities we need to carry out our mission, which is unique in that regard. So the innovation district, um, you could, I could take you back to studies 15 years ago that were, you know, uh, admiring what other uh, universities and cities had done in partnership with their their states, um, uh, big effort by the state of Ohio to try to spur some things along. I know you've um, not been uh, working on things and not to, to jump ahead of you know formal announcements. How do you think about uh, placemaking and uh, districts and places that you and I have visited uh, in our uh, uh, careers? Uh, as a part of the equation for not only growing the city economy, but also the intersection of business and, and the academy? You know, this is probably one of the most exciting things that The Ohio State University is will be doing over the next decade, and that is really uh, strategically designing and then implementing the West Campus Innovation District, which, you know, may have a new name, may not. You know, we have to see how, how, how that grows out. So I think about it, and uh, if I look at places that I've lived and actually worked in, whether it was the Bay Area, near Stanford, Stanford Research International, or Research Triangle Institute, Research Triangle Park. Each one has been unique and, and, and different. Um, and in some, play, in some ways, I would say the Silicon Valley is more of an organic growth, whereas RTP was, uh, I think, designed top down. You know, there were certain anchor tenants that were attracted in, and then the entrepreneurship took a little while to grow. I think we could have the best of both worlds here. Uh, if we think also about having a place where we could combine uh, affordable and fun housing opportunities with the labs, with places for, um, you know, when I lived and did a, uh, a Fulbright scholarship in Edinburgh, 
one of the most fun things was to get together with people at night in, in the um, public establishments, shall we say, and talk about the designs, and we were designing some new chips. In fact, uh, the ca chip cameras that are in every uh, cell phone were actually developed out of the University of Edinburgh at the time that, that I was there. So this is a very active and entrepreneurial time. Uh, so having the ability to get together in fun places outside of the lab, then go back to the lab, I think is something that we need to be very deliberate about how we design, which is another reason why I wanted to bring in Dr. Grace Wong to actually have somebody who gets up every day, thinks exactly about how to orchestrate and work with all of our partners to make this happen for the betterment of the city and the state and the country. So you've been bringing in some uh, uh world-leading uh, uh, teammates, uh, new dean of uh, engineering, uh, certainly Dr. Wong is uh, coming and helping you with the enterprise uh, side of things. Can you talk about uh, your team approach uh, and how you think about uh, constantly um, um, getting the best people in the best positions? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, as you mentioned, uh, and I mentioned before, Dr. Wong, we also have a pretty exciting, um, we've had a tremendous College of Engineering Dean and Dave Williams, and I've known him for, for a long time, and Dave's awesome. Um, he's stepping down, but he's staying, and so he's going to be working on some special projects, which is great. And then we have a, a new, really up-and-coming dean, Dr. Ayana Howard. She is an expert in autonomous vehicles, robotics. Uh, she leads the School of Interactive Computing at Georgia Tech. Uh, some of the innovations that Georgia Tech has led over the last 25 years that took them from being ranked in the 30s as a universe, as an institute, college, to top 10, top five has been phenomenal. So she's lived in that DNA, and part of it was the Georgia Tech Research Institute, which is right near Georgia Tech. So again, having that, that innovation campus near Ohio State and to have that interplay, I think, will be really important. Building a team, that's always, I think, the best part of these jobs because uh, getting people together, different backgrounds, diverse, uh, dedicated, hardworking, and kind. I think that's it, optimistic and kind. I think those are sort of the traits that, that, that I look for. And we've been blessed to have leaders here that are like that and leaders that we'll bring in from outside as well. I suspect Ryan Day would say the best athletic facilities are not going to produce a national championship team, but the recruiting uh, and putting together right. the team, and that's what you're doing every day, right? Right. Finding the best in the existing team and uh, in, in recruiting uh, new members to be a part of it. Absolutely, and I think uh, uh, Coach Day is giving a talk in, I think, two weeks to all the undergraduates, and I'm thrilled about that. See, then that's, that's where... Uh, I do think that Ohio State's got a bit of the secret sauce because you see everybody pulling together for the betterment of the whole. The fact that, you know, undergraduates wanted to hear from him, wanted to hear what it was like to lead that group and the, of fine young men through the, the war that ended up to be the, the national championship game, I think was exciting. But it's also the lessons learned, you know, the Wednesday night in real life, how we expand that for the whole university. Um, seeing excellence wherever it is, celebrating it, expanding that, uh, that's what it's all about. And that's why I'm, we're having a blast. Jane, I think we've got one, time for one more question. And I'm gonna combine two questions because I have a sense that the answer is probably gonna be about the same. Uh, Catherine uh, Gerber from the Ohio State University, what's been your biggest surprise about taking the helm of Ohio State University? And Bill Wahoff, he wants some help. What can I say to my West Point grad to convince him to attend OSU School of Law? Ah. Well, I'm happy to reach out to the West Point grad, uh, and uh, I have spoken to the graduates of West Point, and uh, they're, uh, we'd be thrilled to have uh, anyone there that would want to come to the Ohio State, of course. Um, biggest surprise, wow. That's, that's, uh, there, there have been a lot. Um, I think the, um, you know, I think one surprise, and, I wouldn't have expected it, but it was just so heartwarming. It was uh, I do pop in with the president along with Dr. Um, Melissa Shivers, who is our senior vice president for student life, and we do it with the students that are in isolation and quarantine. And just to see their spirit and to see them so upbeat, I didn't expect that. I was I was inspired by it. I was, 
you know, thrilled. I love, they, they're so innovative. I know that I tweeted this out in the fall. So we had one student, this was early days. So this was the first time that we had, we're just trying this out. Okay, we're gonna ha have, uh, we're gonna isolate students who are COVID positive and we're gonna quarantine students that have been exposed to it. So one student who was, who was positive, he had taken the water bottles and um, he had built a little bowling alley in his room. And he took an orange and he would roll it down, you know, the, the hallway and, you know, they, they, you know, he would play, of course, he's on his own, so he'd be playing, you know, singles bowling. But I said, send me a photo of that, and it was great. And then he sent the video of it. Um, I think seeing that innovation, that, that, that spirit of, yeah, I'm in here, I'm in here for 10 days, this is going to be tough. But, hey, I, this is what I did, this is what I'm going to do. And then to see the band go out, yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. We are so happy you're here. Okay. Well, your uh, vision, your energy, your inspiration um, uh, is genuinely uh, exciting to all of us. Uh, we are so excited to uh, be at a point in time where we can be like this in person and give Just you and Veronica uh, big hugs and uh, official welcomes, but um, uh, know that this is a community uh, that's not simply rooting uh, for you. We're, we're here as your partner, and I know you are our partner as well, and it showed from uh, day one, and it shows up, uh, you know, today. So thank you thank for you. what you're both doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, everyone. We'll need your help. We want your help and, and appreciate your support. Steve, we'll turn it back to you. Thanks. I hope you found today's forum enjoyable and informative. I, I get the strong feeling we've, we're... Uh, Ohio State's in very good hands into the future. Our forum next week will feature the diversity of local chambers of the Latino, African American, and Asian business communities. We think you'll be surprised about the impact and scope of these organizations. Thanks for our live stream support today presented by the Emergency Response Fund of the Columbus Foundation in partnership with the Columbus Dis Dispatch and PNC. And also thanks to U.S. Bank, the Robert Weiler Company, Deloitte, and Steptoe and Johnson for their sponsorship today. And of course, to our online virtual seat patrons thank you thank you all a special thanks to our speakers we couldn't do this without you uh, dr christina johnson and alex fisher we hope to see you again soon until then stay safe and be well thank you